Hello, my stamping friends. It's Jackie Ballheis from Clomp and Stampers. Look what I have. The new fall mini catalog goes live tomorrow. I am so excited to share my first project out of it using what I found is my favorite product. And I think you might be a little surprised what I picked as my favorite. So let's jump right into it. Let's flip the camera down and let me share with you. Hang on a second. There, I guess the cat's out of the bag because you can see it on the side here. Stencils. I never thought I would love these as much as I do. And I have some beautiful cards to share with you. And I wanna show you how simple they are to use. So it's one of the new products in the new mini catalog. Now, before we dive in, cause I'm sure many of you are saying, where do I get one of these? How do I see it? Well, first off, if you go to my website, you can download it and save it. Most people nowadays seem to like to just look through it online. So you can download it to your phone, your iPad, your computer, whatever, and flip through it just like a regular catalog. Or when you place an order next time, you can add it as an item number. I think they're only like a couple bucks, so not much at all. And then the third way, if you're one of my VIP customers and you place a $50 order with me, when we send you your free tutorials in your thank you email, we also have a link that you can click on and request a mini catalog. So all that information is on my website, as is the information about the projects that I'm sharing with you today. We'll have pictures of them, as well as the list of supplies and everything you need to know. So let's dive right in. As I said, it's stencils. Now these stencils make sunflowers and there's actually four of them that work together to give you a beautiful card. Now I'm going to share with you my best tips. I'm sure there's many other ways to use stencils, but I played around and I found this was the easiest and I'm all about keeping it easy. So first off, we're using basic white. When you use stencils and blending brushes, which is what we're gonna use, the basic white works so good because that smooth surface on there just lets you blend that color really, really nice. Now they're numbered. You can see, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, number one, so that means this one's going to go first. Now I'm gonna just place it on my cardstock. Now this piece of cardstock is actually five and a half by four and a quarter. I found again, a, a little easy tip is I'm gonna cut this down for my card, but I start with a little bit bigger piece than I need because it just gives me more room and easier to hold down and stuff. So we'll trim it afterwards. Now for this one, we're gonna start out using Crush Curry and my blending brush. If you've never used blending brushes, I think you might fall in love with them. Um, I just keep mine in what I call color groups. So orange, this is rust. Right now I'm using that one in crumb cake. If I need one for a brown, I'll probably grab that same one. This is my green one, we're using old olive, and this is my yellow one. So when, you, when you're done with them, you can wash them in water if you want to. They'll stay stained, but they'll be clean. I tend to just have a bunch of them for all you know different colors. I keep them in a, um, like a little container and grab them as I need them. So we're gonna start out with crushed curry. Now you can tape all of this down if, if that feels better for you, but I found these stencils are so easy, I can hold them as I go. And you'll notice where I'm putting my fingers is where the stencil is on top of that cardstock because that holds the cardstock and the stencil all down at one time. So we'll start with Crush Curry and I'm gonna just kind of ink this up, dab it on there. Now I like to be careful about not going right where the cardstock is right away because it'll leave kind of a blob. <laughs> I mean, that sounds funny, but I don't know what else to call it. So I like to tap in the middle. This is stencil right here, because we're just doing the leaves. So I kind of tap in the middle, and then I start spinning circles, and I work my way out. Get some more ink in the middle, work my way out. I want it darker in the center, so this works perfect. And I just kind of keep blending. See how we're just going and blending out? And you know, kind of the mystery of using stencils is, it's like, is that really showing up? Oh, just a little bit. Is it really showing up down on that white? And you're gonna be amazed when we pull this off. So let's get all three of these with our crushed curry. Now, before I move my stencil, I'm gonna add a little bit of pumpkin pie. So let's grab our orange one. Now, pumpkin pie is pretty dark, so I wanna be really careful about not getting those blobs. So I might even blob it off a little bit on my scrap paper, start in the middle, and I'm just kinda of doing a little circle in the middle. Um, Cause we want it, I, I want it just kind of down, ooh, that might've gotten a little dark there. We'll see how that pans out, it'll be good. And then 
we'll do this one. There are mini brushes as well, which like especially the small flower, a mini brush might have been better. Okay, you ready for the magic? La da! Look at how pretty those are. Now, I said there's four of them. So there's number one. And I think actually they do the leaves number two. I like to come in and do the leaves last. So I'm going to actually jump to number three. And you'll see this will match up perfectly just like so and the colors i've been playing with are crumb cake for my centers so again we'll just kind of we want that to you know i can dab in there a little bit too if i want to now with these stencils i played and i made probably 10 cards with them without ever cleaning them off um so i knew you know when i'm all done i'll probably just take them to my sink and clean them off but as long as I take this and I just set it on my work surface with that ink side up, it's not going to get on anything. And we can just keep using it and using it. So there's that one. Now, I came in next. I like the look of using some Cajun craze. So we're going to line this one up. Now, these stencils also have little notches. Some people like to like on their, you know, if, especially if you tape everything down, use the notches to match up stuff. Um, that just didn't seem to work so good for me because these line up so super easy. Okay, now this Cajun craze is pretty dark, so I want to not put a lot on there. Um, it's going to show up a lot, so I'm not even inking it a whole lot in between. So let's pull that off. There we go. Look at our flowers. Okay, next are the leaves. Now with the leaves, Stampin' Up! did design this that you could put this on, I don't know, something like this. Again, you'd have to match up the notches for that. But I didn't like how it laid out, to be totally honest, because I felt like the leaves were floating. I like my leaves up next to a flower. So I started doing them individually. Again, easy peasy. So I'm going to do this big one. I'm just placing it because I can see real easily where it is. And we're going to, again, start down at the base and work out. I want it a little bit darker and then blend out a little bit. So there's a big leaf. You know, we might want to come down here. I don't know, I didn't like that, this kind of rounded leaf. So I, I don't think I even use it on any of the samples I have to share with you. So we're gonna go ahead. We can put a couple of those on there. Um, you can just keep adding as many leaves as you want. So let's stick another one up here. Now, after we finish this, I'm going to show you how you can build from this basic stenciling into, I think, an amazing card. So we can just stop right there. You get the, the idea. So there are our sunflowers. Now, at this point, we could, I cut it down. Remember, I wait and I cut it down after I've stenciled it. That just gave me more room to hold everything down. So I cut this one down. Um, oh gosh, three and a half by four and three quarters, I think. All the measurements are over on the blog post that goes with this video. You'll find the link down in the video description to take you to that blog post. I'll list all my colors, all the cutting dimensions, all the supplies I use, make it real easy so that you can duplicate these cards as well. So you'll see, I just added a greeting. This is from the So Sincere stamp set, which is a new one coming out tomorrow in the mini catalog. Great, great greetings for both inside and outside of your of your cards. So I just added that with black. Easy peasy um, to, to do that card. So there's the first one. Like I said, we're going to talk about the progression of a card here. So then for my second card, I after I stenciled it, so I don't need to stencil again, what I did is I took a speckle stamp. Now, there's several stamp sets that have these. This particular one came from ah, layering leaves, I think. Um, and I actually pulled it out of the stamp set. It's on a block. It sits on my stamping desk because I use it often. Um, but look at what just adding a few very light speckles, how it changes the card. I think it just adds some dimension in there. I love this look. Now, what you have to be careful of with spe speckling, because I see people do it, they do this, and they cover the whole thing, and then it doesn't look so nice. So just a few gentle little speckles or splotches and will really bring your card to life. So here you can see, this is one I did. So let's bring this one back in. 
So you can see how it just, in my opinion anyway, adds just a little bit to it. And look at how easy and fun this card is. I love you could just add any greetings to them. Um, you know, I thought it'd be fun someday just to sit and do this. Do a whole bunch of these layers and then finish them off later as cards for whatever you need it. Okay, now are you ready to even go one step further? What As I was playing, after I got this far with it, I thought, let's add even more texture. And I grabbed my current favorite embossing folder. It's the Crosshatch design. This is actually in, it's called Basics 3D Embossing Folders. There's three different designs that all come in a little packet. So I'm gonna go run this through my Stampin' Cut emboss machine and show you what this does to our image. Hang on a sec. Okay, you ready? I think this just went kaboom as far as how cool it looks. Check that out. All those little cross hatches in there. And again, once you trim that down, and let's bring in this one, look at that card and how so easily I was able to just step it up or what I call the progression of a card. We went from this to this to that. Um, I added my greeting on there with some heat embossing on black cardstock. If you're not sure how to do that, leave us a comment. We can share a link to a video just specifically for how to heat emboss. Added my favorite linen thread, and then I finished it off in the inside as well. Now with these stencils, you know, I was able to real easily, where's my flower one? You know, just place a flower down in the corner. I didn't have to do all of them. And then here's an inside verse that goes with this verse from that stamp set we were using. So there is my stepped up version. Now one other one I want to share with you um, oh, you know, let's show this. Make sure you do your envelope. So here is, is really our final version, what I want to share. I did some stenciling on the L, um, envelope, you know, inside. So there's that one. Now, for this one, in this pack of stencils, there's also three backgrounds. There's leaves, which I haven't played with yet, but I'm super excited to play with that one. There's snowflakes, and then there's... Um, what do you call it? Houndstooth, I think it might be called. But if you look real close, you can see I did that houndstooth background. And I started down here. I did that first. And as I was doing it, I went like heavy here. And I just kept working my way out with my blending brush. I always started here and went out. So it got progressively lighter. So you can just barely see it. But it again, it's just building in some texture. After I did that, I did just one sunflower, um, did the little bit of speckles, did the cross hatching, and look at how simple that is. I played around with adding some words on it, but I thought I really like it without words. You could put any greeting on the inside of it. Um, I think sometimes we get so wrapped up in every card has to have a greeting on the front, and it doesn't. So this is just a really pretty note card. So there you go. There is your quick and easy lesson on using stencils. You are going to absolutely love these stencils. You know, I was quite surprised. I, I have several items from the mini catalog, and this was kind of a side add-on purchase, I guess. And as I played with different things, it became my absolute favorite product. It, I could sit and do these cards all day long. Now quick, before I go, I want to show you just a couple other projects that I have made using some of the new catalog, mini catalog products. And these will all be featured in upcoming videos. But um, here are two. This is my easy watercoloring technique that I'm going to be sharing with you with these pine trees. Um, super easy. Anyone can do it. I like to say this technique makes you feel like an artist, even though you, you say you don't have an artistic bone in your body. These cards will make you feel like an artist. So this video will be coming up in the next eh, couple of months. And then one other one. What I really thought would be my favorite bundle in the catalog, and so far I think it is, is, and I can't even remember what it's called. <laughs> Where's all my Stanley lovers out there? So I got super excited about these cards and about this bundle. Um, kind of retro, but again, thermoses and Stanley cups and, 
and bottles and stuff are really becoming big is um, everyone likes to put stickers on them. So there's all the little stamps to mimic putting stickers on. It was so fun to make these cards and I can't wait to share these with you as well in an upcoming video. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you learned some things. I hope these cards inspired you to give stencils a try. Make sure to use the link in the video description to hop over to the blog post and I'll have all the details, pictures of these cards, as well as all the information about getting a new mini catalog. Thanks again. We'll be stamping again real soon. Have a stamp happy day.